Welcome back, makers. It's Miss Michelle from the Creation Station, and this week we will be painting a scene inspired by Joshua Tree National Park. The park is named for the Joshua Tree, or Yucca Brithe Folia, that cover most of the 790,636 acres in the park. That is slightly larger than the state of Rhode Island. The park is popular among hikers, rock climbers, influencers, and amateur astronomers. While my painting is based on images of the park at sunset, you can customize the image to any time of day or location. Before you start painting, let's gather our supplies. For our paint colors, we will be using black, gold, purple, white, pink, neon orange, and yellow acrylic paint. In this video, I'm using a 16 inch by 20 inch canvas. You will also need a paper plate to mix your custom colors, a paper towel to clean off your brushes. I recommend using a half inch flat brush and a 1 8 inch flat brush and then a small detail brush for smaller objects to paint. You will also need one to two cups of water to rinse off your brushes between each color. Now that we've gathered all our supplies, let's paint. We're going to start on our sky. For this, go ahead and dip your paintbrush into the purple and paint one to two inches at the top. Use long strokes to make sure the sky appears smooth. Go ahead and rinse and dry your brush and then dip into the pink paint. You're going to paint two to three inches below the purple line and blend up into the purple color. Make sure you use long strokes so the paint appears smooth. Clean your brush and then dip into the neon orange paint. You're going to want to paint about only one inch for this section and then blend it into the pink. Go ahead and rinse and dry your brush and then dip into the yellow paint. You'll paint about five to six inches as this will be the largest section of the sky. Clean your brush and in a few scattered areas, streak white paint through each section and then blend. This will create the appearance of dissolving clouds. Now we're going to make some fluffy clouds. Take two scoops of purple, a small dab of black, and a scoop of white, and mix until you get a smoky purple. This will be the base color for our clouds. Using your big brush, tap into the paint mixture, and then carefully tap a cloud shape into the upper section of your sky. This will be in your orange, pink, and purple sections only. For the base color in your lower section, Tap into white paint and make some cloud shapes. Continue using the white paint and tap a few dots onto your purple clouds. Then use one of your fingers to dab the paint and create a fluffy cloud effect. You can go back and forth between purple and white to create texture and shadowing. We'll get back to the other clouds a little later. It's time to make our mountain range. Using what you have left of the purple mixture, add a little more black until you get a dark purple color. Then use your 1 8 inch flat brush and mark out your mountain range and then fill in with your color. When you finish with your mountains, clean and dry your brush and then dip into the black paint. You will fill in the remainder of the canvas with black. It's time to go back to our lower clouds. Add one to two scoops of white to your purple mixture until you get light purple. Dab a few dots onto the bottom areas of the cloud and then blend with your finger. You can add a few more layers of white and purple to your clouds until you are happy with how they look. When you finish your clouds, make sure the yellow section of the sky is completely dry and then dip your detail brush into the white paint. Make a semicircle around the middle of the canvas at your mountain range. This will be the sun setting. To make it pop, you can add some yellow paint to the edge to create a solar halo. 
will want to wait about 10 to 15 minutes for your sky egg to completely dry before starting on our Joshua trees. Once dry, take your big brush and dip into the black paint. You want to make a line from about 4 inches from the top down to the base of the mountains as this will be your largest tree. Use the edge of your brush to create branches out. As you continue making your trees, you want to go smaller and smaller each time as this will create distance in appearance. Once you have mapped out all your trees, take the 8th inch flat brush and use the thin side to flick paint from the end of the branch out. This will create the long evergreen leaves. Do this for every branch of each tree. For your smaller trees, switch over to your detail brush and these will make the lines a lot cleaner in appearance. When you have finished painting each tree in black, clean and dry your brush and then dip into the gold paint. We're going to paint a top coat of gold on all the tree trunks, which means you're going to bring the trunks down into the rest of the black area so the trees pop out in detail. Make sure to use gold paint to give a top coat to the leaves as well. Once you've finished with the trees, our final step will be to add the rest of the plant life in our Joshua tree scene. Using the big brush, take a small amount of gold paint and flick upwards. This is going to give the appearance of plants. When you finish filling in the bottom section, take a few moments to touch up any areas that you think need work, and then don't forget to add your signature. Voila! Your masterpiece is complete. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Paint with Michelle. Please share your works of art on social media and tag the Creation Station or use the hashtag Paint with Michelle.